So what I am telling you now anecdotally is also, of course, the subject of PNI, the science of psychoneuroimmunology. We do well in acute disease. We do not do well in chronic disease. In order to get people to change their chronic diseases, whether you're dealing with Alzheimer's patients or whether you're dealing with cardiochronic, chronic cardiovascular patients, we somehow need to get people to somehow change their behaviors. Three million Americans are having bypass or angioplasty a year at a cost of millions of dollars. There isn't a PA or cardiovascular surgeon in this country who will not say to his or her patients, you know, this is gonna work, but you know, it's good for about five to seven years. I mean, we live in a country in which immediate gratification and take care of it immediately and do it to me and you know, so it works five to seven years, I'll come back. In five to seven years, you can do me again. But there is no one who doesn't say to their patients, you have to change your behavior, you gotta smoke less, you gotta eat better, you have to exercise more, you gotta stop drinking, you have to stress less. How many people do you think change their behaviors as a result of this discussion? 10% of the population. 90% of the people do the same old thing in the same old way. In order to change behavior, to deal with chronic disease, you have to touch people's hearts. You have to make them participants in the healing process. It's not we who do it to them, but we who allow them to become participants on their healing journey. We who help people acknowledge that they have to be the principal agents in their own healing. That's how we move to prevention. That's the task, changing people's behaviors. And to do that, you want to open your heart and to touch them with it. So I want to tell you as well that it doesn't matter whether we come in balance, whether we come with open heart, whether we are in synchrony in mind, body, and spirit, stuff happens to us, as the kids say in the street. Stuff happens. It's not quite what they say in the street, but uh, <laughs> even if you are in balance, stuff happens. The critical aspect in staying healthy is how you come to the stuff that happens, not the stuff. Stress is not an event, it's the reaction to an event. And you always have choice about how you come to the events. The first critical aspect in healthcare delivery in this country is to find a way to come to every day with joy. We have got to lighten up. Let me show you this slide. This is my friend and colleague, somebody with whom I love and whom I will be going with very soon to Peru to build a little one-room clinic, uh, and you will see very soon, as if magically appearing on the screen, which we can hear behind me. So there it is. Sorry about that. This is not the first slide. Let's go back one more, since we have given away now this one. This one. Thank you. Do you know who this is? This is Patch Adams, my friend and brother, the real Patch Adams. I love this guy. It reminds me of what healthcare is about. So I went to see Patch one day, and he had uh, a costume. I had to put on this costume, and now I'll show you the next slide. It was a costume of a toilet. I saw this, and I said, I have got, I have got to wear this. I've got to put this on. The next slide, please. I have got to put this on. I mean, this is what I do. I mean, I am a professional toilet. People come and dump on me. This is... <laughs> this is who I am. I said, let's go down to the steps of the Capitol wearing this costume and talk about what's happening to healthcare in America. Patch thought this was too revolutionary, and instead we decided that uh, we would go to one of the great malls in America, the second largest mall in America, in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, where I would get a pair of white bucks to go along with this costume. Look at this costume. I mean, a toilet tank on my shoulder. It's the only thing you see is my head. The round hexagonal nut on my waist, hot and cold faucets, this plumbing ring around my thighs. We agreed I would not speak. Very hard for me. The only thing I would do was to make toilet sounds. <laughs> my mother was horrified when I told her this story. 
So here we are. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, Patch is preparing me, plunging my head. You see the jewels underneath the toilet seat? He's getting me ready. And the next slide, you will see us now. We are in Tyson's at the mall. Here we are going up the escalator steps. Notice there is nobody with us on the escalator. <laughs> Dressing up as a toilet is not what you call an invitation to positive projection. The only people who will talk to you dressed as a toilet and making toilet sounds are children. <laughs> children love toilets <laughs> and anything that sounds like one. The first store we went into, the salespeople disappeared. You could have walked out with everything. The next store we went into prided itself on customer service. If I can have that slide, please. We were greeted <coughs> by a shoe salesman. You'll see the store now. Patch said, I want to buy a pair of white bucks for my toilet. And the shoe salesman said, would you have your toilet sit down, sir? <laughs> That's customer service. We walked out with this bag. Next door was a Disney store. Daffy Duck came out and asked to have his picture taken with us. <laughs> the greatest act of revolution in contemporary American healthcare is to find a way to come to every day with joy. We have got to lighten up. The work that we do is so difficult, and we have to come together in community to remind ourselves what it is we're all about and to honor what it is that we do that reminds us of our noblest selves. Can I have the next picture, please? Are you still with me? Uh, because I'm going to go past my allotted time, because I'm out of control, is what it is. I so let me, have, let me have the next picture, if I could. We're having some difficulty. So let me quickly give you some idea. It's not what you got. It's how you come to what you got. It's not the events in our lives, but the choices we make about how we come to the events. This kid was climbing in the White Mountains of New Hampshire and was caught in an unseasonable blizzard. He sustains a whiteout on his way down and it's getting dark with his remaining strength. He builds a rudimentary lean-to, and he is discovered 48 hours later. By this time, he's got irreversible frostbite, and he sustains a bilateral BK amputation. 18 years old. This picture is taken a year and a half later when he climbs the mountain on which he had previously been caught in the blizzard. And he was interviewed in this article that accompanied this photograph and was asked by the reporter, what is it like now to climb this mountain? Happened to be Mount Washington. Now, as compared to beforehand when you had your feet and legs, and this young man says, what's it like now? Now, I don't get cramps in my calves. <laughs>